Um, <laughs> there's that information. There's a very interesting uh, 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 patent, an article here on the Hussar people out of uh, Krakow, uh, Poland, uh, who are attempting to work on some kind of a, a supercritical water injection. And uh, let me uh, go right down the line. Uh, if you're ever interested in seeing something, I have a patent. Um, I think it is right here. Uh, the Gary Ginter Group uh, have a 54 page patent. And, uh, and uh, managed to burn through the better part of six or seven million dollars. Uh, Mr. Mr. Ginter was a nice person. I talked to him a few years ago. He lives in the Chicago area. The, the mistake he made uh, at going to college was studying sociology and religion instead of physics and engineering. And so when he made seven million dollars in the, in the futures market or stock trading or something, investing, he then hired uh, engineers, including one I met who had a PhD in engineering, who have been busy relieving him of his seven million dollars <laughs> uh, getting patents which mean nothing and, and if you look at this closely what uh, what he has invented is a uh, basically a jet engine in which you uh, inject water uh, into the combustion chamber so that you don't have s such a hot combustion products that you melt the, the turbine blades uh, and it's a genius idea if you can ever figure out how to condense that, which is uh, not possible at all to do. Um, see, there's, there's some uh, really important information here, uh, as soon as I find it. Uh, fascinating books. This is the uh, best book on steam generators by Donatella Honoratoni. Uh, you ought to try buying these sometime. I think this is now uh, $300. I'm not real sure. I didn't pay that much for it when I... Uh, when I got it, but uh, here's your Horlock uh, combined uh, uh, heat and power where you're doing uh, bottoming cycles and topping cycles, which is what that is uh, is all about. Uh, you should, uh, when you come over here to look at these things, feel free to uh, pull them out and look at them. I personally think that this uh, Cherimus Mizanoff uh, heat, uh, series, uh, this is a heat transfer book, are some of the better uh, books explaining what's going on there. Um, oh, here's what I wanted to do. I knew there was something important. I just couldn't remember what it was. I have the entire uh, 100 SAE technical papers in these two volumes, which relate to steam. And as you were happily leaping through these 100 different SAE technical papers, and you will be pleased to note that we do have an index. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I delegated the, the magazine article thing to one of my IT people, and uh, so I didn't inquire closely as to whether they had made an index because I don't like my employees to see me cry uh, in front of them, and I wasn't absolutely certain. When you look at these SAE technical papers, you should keep in mind that if you're a member of the SAE, they're 11.50 each. So you're looking at about $1,200 right there. Uh, so feel free to not lift them. Uh, if you ever want to know anything about uh, rotary valve engines, we have a, a study on rotary valve engines. We have the Goebbels uh, collected collected papers. Um, we have any, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of little odds and ends stuff here, and uh, if you ever want to know what's really going on uh, in the steam world, this is the ASME uh, uh, Energy Tech magazine that comes out once a month, mm -hmm. and it's dedicated to the people who make, uh, who make electricity in the very, very large power plants. 
uh, I mean, here's something that we don't really need. We don't need to use a wet limestone scrubber because we're not in that business yet. However, much of what they're doing kind of relates to what we are doing. Uh, they're making steam and using it, uh, albeit at a, at a different uh, level uh, than, than we are doing. Um, this is probably one of the more uh, fascinating uh, works here. The Newcomb Society out of uh, Great Britain has published any number of articles, and I do not have them entirely scanned here. I have some of them, but they are the one place to get the really, really uh, good explanation of the uh, still. Uh, uh, what am I trying to What am I trying to say? It's a, it's a hyphenated word. Come on, Ken, you can help us. And Ken came through one more time for the Kitson Kitson hyphen. Still, uh, which is a, an excellent idea, and it should have been done more. And uh, can I just note that if some of the people that have uh, uh, been recently designing engines to do the same thing, it wouldn't be. Uh, Ken you know, is trying. Like to they would have noticed that maybe the uh, steam side should not be as big as the internal combustion engine side. You know, Ken's, Ken's trying to be desperately, I might add. Uh, trying to be diplomatic, <laughs> and he is attempting to not make reference to the person I referred to three minutes ago, my good friend Mr. Harmon, who has invented without a doubt Same the most. I I Amen. love studying the steam engines because they restore my faith, absolutely right. restore my faith in the. Uh, uh, ability of people to invent complex things. It just, there is no limit to how incredibly complex somebody can figure out how to make something. And Mr. Harmon has this wonderful idea. Uh, he, he's avoided using a crosshead, and he's using the inside of the piston, he's using the outside of a piston like a normal, well-adjusted person has for an IC engine. And then he machines the inside of the piston, and I've completely forgotten how he got rid of the wrist pin, but it's not in the way. And so the inside of the piston comes over a, a plug, and we cannot illustrate that without dumping coffee on somebody else's, oh, it's somebody else's paper, why, why did I care? So anyhow, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, the piston goes up and down over a plug, so this ends up being the, the cylinder head. So it's a uh, enormously clever way of accomplishing something which didn't really need to be accomplished. <laughs> um, but it's uh, it, it's it's a it's a good it's fine it's fine that people can do that. Um, if I'd had a, a few more uh, moments here, we could have. Uh, uh, we could have found a little more organization as to what I have, uh, but there's just, uh, I mean, here's, here's Doug Garner's monotube boiler control, um, here's West, Westbury's uh, Gemini engine, uh, there's just more information in here than you can, than you can possibly find, and what's interesting is this information is almost impossible uh, to find anywhere else. Here, for example, is a uh, Curtis Turbin uh, thing. Uh, here is a Skinner Uniflow engine uh, thing. Um, here is your uh, Davoud thing. And Mr. Davoud, uh, Tinker Davoud, were trying to accomplish, uh, probably in a, in a different way, they were trying to accomplish what Mr. Zilm was trying to accomplish. What they were trying to do was use the steam that, uh, that they didn't, they didn't want to uh, condense the steam and lose the latent heat of vaporization. And so the whole theory there, as I understand it, and uh, I have asked many people who actually understand it to explain it to me uh, and have failed. So I decided that if no one who understands it is going to explain it, then we're going to have somebody who doesn't understand it explain it. 
uh, which is, is better. But when you have all that steam that is fully expanded, what you want to do is you want to use that steam one more time without uh, condensing it. So what you want to do is you want to repressurize it. Well, you want to repressurize it before you run it through a, a boiler again, but you don't want to have that heat build up while you're repressurizing it because it's bad enough to repressurize it. So you spray the water in while the piston is going back up and then you run that through the boiler can we go to something? Oh, here we are. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You will never know what Mr. Daboud was trying to do. You will never know. And uh, that's the way it goes. This is, uh, this is Jim Tangeman's garden tractor. Uh, it was made uh, with a, is that a two and a quarter inch uh, board? Two inch? Two and a sixteen. Two and a sixteen? I always exaggerate. There were the 16th inch boards and, uh, pardon me, a piston valve. The, uh, Jim knew the guy who was in California and since moved to Florida, who, uh, the, his name of his business is Loco Gear. And he casts these beautiful little, well, they're actually really ugly because they're very rough castings, uh, of the cylinders and the whole thing for a shade. Uh, which is everybody knows is a three cylinder vertical uh, uh, engine for a model uh, Shane locomotive engine. Uh, so Jim knew the guy and got only the cylinder castings and then machine uh, the whole cylinder, the uh, uh, piston valves made the pistons, made the piston valves, made his own wrist pins, connecting rods, and and did that. And that is is one of the fastest things I have ever been in. Uh, I made a wood-fired thing, and I have this fire that's just humongous to go anywhere. And he's got this little teeny fire, and uh, and it goes everywhere because he happens to have uh, a Worth Worthington boiler in there, which he welded up himself. Which actually, uh, most amazing thing, it works. I don't know how far you can get in there to see what the Worthington boiler is. Uh, the, the, the problem, and Mr. Mr. Tangerman did not ask me for advice on how to make this, but as my suggestion was he should have spent a lot more time making that a wider track uh, so that it was actually safe to drive instead of making something that would do 40 miles an hour that should never go over 15 if somebody <laughs> wants to live on it. He should have made, it, made a better chassis, but when somebody makes a steam plant that is, is so successful, then you can't... Uh, uh, you don't want to complain. <laughs> I asked Jim to bring two other things on this little paddle wheel boat that had the 5A uh, Stuart Turner engine in it. He made a Lamont boiler basically using the basic designs that Tony Grissett had come up except by making significant improvements in the, the part out there which has the pump, which is a double acting pump, so it's pressure equalized so he's not pumping uphill all the time is there. I asked him to bring that, and did you bring your new uh, your new cylinder? Okay, good. We'll, we'll get to the other thing on the next slide. So we have we have more pictures showing that thing up there. Right. I'll keep going then. Oh, am I supposed to? Yeah, you were narrating these. Oops, wrong person. Sorry. Okay, here's a picture of Mr. Vicko. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there. That's What's another that? factor. From uh, that's from Mendocino County. Yeah. Say a few words. You want me to talk that's about it, or you want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what end I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> a little more flash, I think. You'll never, you'll you'll never get a chance. To I want talk. Bruce. I want Bruce to tell about the uh, coils in his in his in his bolt boiler because this is they, they were the wrong size and he chopped them out and made them the right size and I can't remember if he made them little or bigger. The, the, the coils were in this boiler and they were too small and I put bigger ones in and it worked much better. I thought you said that was a shell boiler. No, that's in the boat. Whatever. Pin me up. No, that's beat me up. Okay. Um, a few years back, you know, I'll go with start. Um, I always kind of had a wish to build a contraption that 
Sure. So I can drive around. Yes. And I've been fooling around with the boats for a long time. Uh, Steamboats. And it is a quantum leap to go from boats to land vehicles just because they're more involved. Uh, and so I kind of would make sketches of iron wheel tractors and I thought about you know, scale model case or free land or something. But anyhow, uh, we lived up on the side of a steep mountain and it kind of precluded me doing anything because it would have been very dangerous and also yeah, very difficult to make something that climb a steep hill and also have good enough brakes to not go down the hill and kill somebody. So we ended up moving down on some flatter ground and uh, one of the things that came with the property was a Ford 8N tractor that the previous owners had dropped an enormous cottonwood tree across <laughs> while it was running. And <laughs> it basically drove the hood down into the, you know, the front down the ground, broke the front wheels out, uh, cracked the block, and so there was this hulk of a tractor sitting against the fence. And uh, meanwhile, this thought of building something that uh, not the thought hadn't died, and I was looking at that hulk and I go, wait a minute, there it is. Yep. Half built. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I, uh, I got my, my kids to give me a hand picking up with the other tractor bucket and carting it out of the field and into the shop where I could cut off the bad parts and keep the good parts and propped it up on some blocks of wood and then got some two by fours and plant things and kind of started measuring and thinking. Made a few sketches and. Uh, so this is kind of what has evolved to. This was the original boiler that was on it. I had built a shell type water tube boiler. This is what Tom's confused. Okay. Um, which was going to be for my boat. But I hadn't taken the old boiler out of the boat. And I thought, well, here's the boiler. I'll just use this for now for this. But um, the engine is a 3 and 5 by 4 compound. Uh, a man named Dick Burley made patterns quite a few years back for a boat engine, four and a half type compound, and I had a set of attachments for that. Um, but I didn't have space to do four and a half and also be able to reach the firebox and you know, configure this. So the engine is built in a V configuration. Uh, you reach between the cylinders, there's a pedal you step on and the fire door opens and you can stuff wood in. Um, I'm not as clever as most of you guys and with the engineering and stuff. So I kind of cobbled this thing together and didn't want to spend a whole lot of money making it too correct. Or, you know, I didn't want to get too far into it and find out they didn't work. So I made it the way I do things and it actually works pretty well. And in retrospect, I think that something like this that was done a little more properly would be very viable for third world countries. As far as fuel, it likes sticks. It doesn't like big firewood. It likes handfuls of sticks, lots of flame, and you know, so you have a fireman and, and the guy driving it. Uh, I skidded a few logs with it that weren't huge, but they were big enough that it was working. Uh, I put it in a tractor pole and embarrassed myself badly. <laughs> um, but it's been a lot of fun, and uh, that's kind of it. It's out there, and if somebody wants to crowd me, I can point out more stuff that I can't think of right now. And I, I'm, I'm, thank you for letting me be here and sharing this, and I hope to learn something from you, all you people today. What were the different sizes of those okay. boilers? The, the boiler is a three-drum type. And I had acquired some boiler tubing from one of the guys that moved some motor power. Uh, and the first stuff I used was 5 8 diameter of a 5 16 bore, fairly heavy wall. Mm -hmm. And I rolled them in the lathe uh, around 4 inch pipe. I played with the, the change gear to get the lead screw going really fast and the spindle going as slow as it would go. Yep. And ran through the split block of oak and wound them. But because they're like 13 turns in a 20 foot length. Uh, the small diameter, there wasn't flow through it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize this was a problem. You know, I heard a circle A with it, the tube red hot, and that stuff was going to come out of there. Well, it didn't work that way. <laughs> so the other size of tube that I got a bunch of was three quarter inch diameter, uh, a little over the 120 wall. 
And I was hesitant to use that first because I thought it's just going to collapse when I do this unless I make a fancy spiral on the gliding handle. Uh, but it turned out because it's a needle boiler tube, it just wound up nice. And so, uh, you know, same deal, you set the uh, feet on the lathe, and start her up slow and all and wind them up, and then the other set, you start the other end, put the feet in reverse, and wind left hands and right hands, and then they nest together nicely. Mm -hmm. So it's about 35, 38 square feet, something like that, which turns out it's not quite enough for that engine, unless you've got a really roaring fire. Um, so it's if you're not being distracted and you've got lots of sticks and you're on top of it, you can keep it pretty good. If you're at a show and some nice looking lady wants to ride the next thing you know, your fire's gone to hell, then you, you know, you don't have to <laughs> Yes. Bruce, did you put an economizer in that? Um, yes, there's an economizer coil up in the top of the boiler. There's also probably about 10 feet of superheat pipe up in the top of the boiler. Actually, the superheat is in the top of the boiler. The economizer is right below the, the steam drum. It's all steel. Um, and then on the exhaust, there's a uh, feed water heater on the exhaust. The exhaust goes up the stack to provide draft. That little loopy thing on top of the stack, it was my son's idea uh, to keep us from getting black spots on our t-shirts. Is it working? Yes. <laughs> the original prototype of that was we were taking it around the back of the property first time of the year and going, this sucks. I just put on a brand new pair of shorts and they're already getting covered in soot and black. There's a piece of corrugated metal. Let's put that up there see how that works. And it worked good until a tree branch knocked it off. It was back and I made it pop <laughs> The yeah. whistle. Oh, the whistle. Yeah, the little ball shaped thing here is the whistle. And uh, that was a ball from a brass bed. But it had a little straight section on the bottom. I thought, I bet I could make a whistle out of it. And it sounds nice. <laughs> so you're going to run it? No, big question. So when are you going to spark it up so we can see it run? Um, they said Sunday maybe we could fire some stuff up. Yeah, sure. So I've got a box of wood. So it's up to you guys. So I could give the wood to Jim if you want to see his go. It's better. It runs better than my best. Or I'm sure there's something we can find some presto logs here. Yeah, run them all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that's about it. Pull some rope. Thanks, folks.